Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new year 2022, believe it or not. Since it is the new year, I thought I'd take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Anna and welcome you to my channel. Now, those of you that have been around for a while know that I cover a few different things. I love 19th century millinery, particularly straw, which is what we're going to talk about today. But I also like Victorian fancy work, those small, unique, whimsical items that women and children often made from bits and pieces. Uh, it could be sewing accessories, pen wipers, which is a particular obsession, and other little, usually useful, sometimes not, little things. And then, of course, I also like bringing that into the modern world and doing some crafts with that. Now, usually around here, as soon as I start recording, Miss Clara likes to join us, but I've already kicked her off the table once today because I have some original items that I'm going to share with you. So, on to today's topic. This is one of those pet topics of mine. Uh, it's a little thing and a not so little thing at the same time. Uh, it's something that I've had a growing understanding of as I've worked with straw. And here comes Clara. Three, two. <laughs> hi, baby. Say hi. Hi. Now say bye because I got things on the table. Love you. All right. So as I've been working with straw over the years, I've come to have a better understanding of the cheek tab. Now, what is the cheek tab? Let's take a look at one of those reproduction pieces I've been working on. This part here is called the cheek tab. This is the part that extends down from the brim. And when worn, wraps along the cheek area here, thus cheek tab. Okay, you can see that. Now you'll notice the cheek tab is quite long. Let's pop over and look at some pieces, some original pieces. Okay, we are going to look at examples of cheek tabs from a sampling of millinery from the Susan Green Collection at the John L. Whaley Gallery at the Genesee Country Village and Museum. Now this first piece is the earliest of the three non-straw pieces I wanna show you. This piece is, I'm going to estimate, later 1840s into the earlier 1850s. This is gonna be the widest cheek tab that we look at. Now notice that you can see the structural line of the front of the brim coming smoothly down along the bonnet into what becomes the cheek tab, okay? This is a nice, beautiful, smooth line. And then you can also see the gentle curve from the side of the bonnet curving almost into a C down into the cheek tab, which has a beautiful rounded bottom part. All right, this cheek tab comes down quite a distance. It curves backwards slightly and inwards at the same time. So it truly is shaping around the face. With our next example, we have a structured bonnet, structured by wire with net. And again, we see a beautiful line from the front edge of the brim down into the cheek tab. And you can very easily see in the right-hand photo, the curve from the side of the bonnet down into the cheek tab. Now, while our inner materials do hint at a point the edge of that cheek tab is truly curved. It's not going to be abrupt and pointed, even though the interior has a hint of that. Right? But this piece, I think, shows a very nice look at how that cheek tab can be built. Now, this next piece shows us how it gets leaner. As we work our way through the 1850s and into the 1860s, the cheek tabs become quite lean. This is a very narrow cheek tab. It's supported entirely by wire with some net or some buckram or some willow in between. 
um, but the true shape is created with that wire. And you can see clearly that there's the line coming down from the brim, shaping around the face. Meanwhile, the line that comes in from the side, creating a beautiful curve that again, hugs along the side of the face. So this is the edge of the jawbone. It kind of hugs just under the edge of the jawbone along where the cheek is. Now we're gonna move into some straw. This straw shows us beautifully something I really want you to see. I want you to take your eyes and follow the edge of the brim. Start at the top and work your way down along that brim line to the cheek tab. Notice how that final piece of plate in this example comes down along the brim, wraps around the edge of the cheek tab, and back up along the side of the bonnet. All right, this particular plate is worked in a beautiful curve around the edge of that cheek tab. Now notice each of the preceding rows of plate. So this is the straw braid that makes up this particular bonnet. Notice again, it's a single line from the top of the brim all the way down to the cheek tab. At no point are there smaller pieces creating the front part of the brim. It is one solid piece top to bottom, or in reality, from cheek tab up over the top down to cheek tab. Now in this example, we don't have that plate wrapping around the bottom. We have a different binding technique happening. But notice you can once again clearly see the line from the top of the brim all the way down to the cheek tab. Now while this is a slightly wider cheek tab and it is more angular at the bottom, there is that premise I do want you to see about that single line in the front. And you can clearly see how the rows of plate build the cheek tab. All right. Okay, I hope those examples helped you understand the, the shaping and the development of the cheek tab. I have one more study piece here from my collection that I'm hoping uh, will help you see some more of those details. Now you might be wondering how I'm putting my arm through. It's because the tip of this particular piece has fallen off. It is a study piece, uh, particularly bought so I could look at some of the construction details. All right, so the cheek tab is this part here that extends down along the side of the bonnet. Now this one is slightly more pointed, like the final example from the green collection that I shared with you. It is Still rounded at the very bottom, very narrow, and it has this beautiful C curve here. And it does, let me see if I can hold it like that, um, start to want to curve back in on itself. So it would curve back this way on the body, uh, which tells me it's got that, that 50s aspect. And I can tell you this is something that the straw wants to be able to do. Now this is that line from the top of the brim I was talking about. It is a single last piece. And then each of these preceding pieces are long pieces. You can actually see that. I believe this is still all disconnected. So you can see how that is a single row all the way over. And what I actually pulled out there was two rows together. But it's a beautiful shape that creates that cheek tab itself. At no point are these fragmented cut lines up through here. And then this piece has curve to it. Uh, but there's two curves happening. It's the curve coming in around the face. And then it's the curve coming in from the back to, towards the front or from the front towards the back. And little miss is deciding she wants attention. Nope, babe. There we go, close the curtain. Nope. Yes. <laughs> she loves her camera time. And usually I have these out on the really high table. So she sits on the floor and cries. 
this table is a little lower. Now, where was I? Okay, so we have the curve here and this curve on the side. Now let me set this back over here. And I can talk a little bit more about how the cheek tab is supposed to sit on the body. Uh, those of you that follow my millinery page on Facebook know that I recently had a movie challenge. It frustrated me. And I'm one that doesn't get bothered by movies and shows. Um, but there was a bonnet that stood out because it's a mass-produced bonnet that's been bothersome to me. It had these cheek tabs that kind of, they did extend. They finally are extending them, but they just kind of like dangle there. They don't shape around the face. Let's take a look at some CDVs. Um, like I said, this reverse camera is a little bit of a challenge. So I was able to pick up two new CDVs. You guys will get to see these. So CDV number one, 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 there we go. Magic of technology. How about that? Okay, so this has a good look at how the cheek tab comes down around the edge of her face and goes under her jawline, all right? And that's where the tie comes together. Now, if we go to the next one, okay? This nice front view of a Marie Stewart style bonnet, that's the dip that we see in that brim. It gives us a nice look. There's a bright edge going on there of the cheek tab as it comes down under her jawline along her face. It really frames her face and comes under the jawline and again, ties with the bows. So these are two nice examples of how a bonnet's cheek tabs should be worn. One other thing that you will notice about the shaping of the cheek tabs as it goes under the jawline, it actually is helping hold the bonnet on. So the cheek tab along with the ribbons and believe it or not, the frill and decorations at the top of the brim all work together by the end of the 1850s going into the 1860s. They work together to keep the bonnet on the head. I knew this in theory, but I didn't understand it in practice until I was in a Memorial Day parade, walking down, oh goodness, I'm not even sure how long the road was, but it was in, directly into 45 mile an hour winds, a straight long road that ended in a hailstorm. Now with that direct wind, my bonnet between the decorations, the ribbon, and the cheek tabs, my bonnet stayed in place while my cage actually broke. So that is, that was proof to me that yes, these cheek tabs truly do have a functional component to the bonnet and the bonnet wearing. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand the cheek tab a little bit better, not just how it's worn, but also how it's part of the bonnet itself. Okay. Thank you for joining me for this particular video. I hope you'll check out some of the other videos that I have, maybe subscribe. And if you've been following for a while, I would love it if you would consider hopping over to my Patreon and supporting me there. It lets me do videos like this, as well as a few other projects that I love to share with you. All right, thank you all. Have a safe, happy, hopefully much better 2022. Bye-bye.